In this video, I'm gonna show you how to tile a kitchen floor. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. I'd like for you to take note of the wall here behind me. If you look at the kitchen floor plan, if you take a look at this window, we have cabinets on each side of it, and we got 201 inches to the edge of the last cabinet, which is gonna be over on this wall. So that's where we're gonna run the tile to. It's gonna stop flush with the end of this cabinet. Just so you understand what I'm gonna be doing, let me show you the other wall. If we take a look at this wall, as far as the plans go, we're gonna have the refrigerator back here and I like to run my tile under the refrigerator. And then back in this corner is gonna be where the corner of the cabinets run. As you probably already noticed, I got three quarter inch plywood going around the edge of the kitchen where the base cabinets are sitting. And the reason why I do that is because the base cabinet comes out to about 20 inches. So if I install this three quarter inch subfloor here, I don't have to tile underneath of the cabinet, which saves a lot of money and time, which is very important. Another thing I like to note, I use three quarter inch subfloor because the cement board is a quarter inch. By the time we put the tile and thin set down, it's gonna come out about flush with that plywood, which is very important. I now got to put a reference line on the floor for our first row. Then what we're gonna do now is just set our tile right up to the plywood just and give it just a slight gap. So we got about a sixteenth there and I'm just gonna take my pencil and mark right beside that tile. And that's gonna be how far we need to have the string line come off of the wall. So I'm gonna measure up to that mark I just made from the wall and we got 31 and a quarter inch. So now I'm gonna go down to the other side of the kitchen. So now I'm gonna measure off the drywall, 31 and a quarter inch. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make a nice mark there. And then I'm going to just drive an eight penny nail into that mark. And I'm gonna take my chalk line and hook to that eight penny nail and we're going to strike a line from mark to mark. I'm now going to mix up the thin set in order to install the tile on the floor and in order to mix up the thin set we need to make sure we get the correct thin set. As you can see this is for porcelain tile so if you're using ceramic tile make sure you get thin set that's compatible with ceramic tile so always keep that in mind. So all we need is the actual thin set mortar itself we need a clean bucket of water and then a bucket to mix it in with a half inch drill and a mixing blade. I recommend that you wear a respirator when you're mixing up the thin set. You don't want to breathe in the dust that goes up in the atmosphere. I'm going to first begin by pouring in the thin set powder into a five gallon bucket. Pour in just a little bit of water. And then I'm going to go ahead and start mixing it up. And as you can see, it's still really dry. So we need to add more water. And after you get a peanut butter like consistency, keep mixing it up for about three minutes. Now after this has been sitting for five minutes, we're gonna remix it up for a few more minutes. All right, so I'm over here to where the kitchen ends before it transitions to hardwood floor later. And I'm gonna cut the end tile to finish over by the cabinets because I want to start over here with the staggered joint. So I want a full tile to start here. And then I just want a half tile to end because I think it looks better that way. So the grout joint's going to be there at the very end with a short tile that's going to cut to finish this second row. So now that with that being said, that's why I'm going to start here on the end. And you might want to take some measurements to see where you want to start at because it might be a little different. All right, so first thing we got to do is put thin set here up to this line that we made because we don't want to go too far past this line because it's going to set up before we get started on the second row so always try to avoid getting too much past this red line so we got to get thin set on the floor and a tool that i found that's easiest to use is a six inch putty knife and you can use a notch trowel for this so that way you only have one tool but for me, it's easier just to use the putty knife. And you're gonna need a quarter inch notch trowel if you're gonna be doing these 24 by 12 inch tiles that I'm doing, they recommend a quarter inch notch trowel. So with that being said, I'm first gonna start by putting thin set right across the floor where it's gonna be getting the tile. 
From my experience and to get used to the notch trial, the 6 inch putty knife is easier to remove the thin set from the 5 gallon bucket. And now after you get the thin set on the floor, we're going to take the notch trial and we're just going to run it through the thin set and it's going to comb out the thin set. And next, I'm going to take my tile and back butter it. In order to back butter it, we're just going to do what we did to the floor. We first apply the thin set to the back of the tile. If you do have somebody helping you, it's very nice to have them back butter the tile and have them ready to go as you set the tile on the floor. And after you get 100% coverage on the back of the tile, we just take our quarter inch notch trowel and run through it. Back buttering the tile is important because it gives you much more coverage than only putting the thin set on the floor. As you can see, we got a 100% coverage on the back of this tile. So now I'm just going to lay it right up to the end of where I want the floor to be. And I'm going to be running flush to the cement board in this case because I knew that's where I wanted to start out at. And you may need a chalk line there going opposing the wall in case you don't have a border to go off of. So now I'm just going to wiggle this into place. And now I'm just going to line the tile up with our chalk line. That is right over here. I'm now going to remove that thin set before it sets up on the floor. I now have the tile setting where I want it to permanently stay. So now I'm just going to put shims back here between the plywood and the tile so that way it doesn't shift around and get off the line that we have here. I'm just gonna repeat that process for the next tile, except in between the tiles, I'm gonna install these spacers, and these spacers are for the leveling system. So I'm gonna put one about two inches away from each edge, because you gotta put them in now because you can't do this after you have the tile laying down, you'll understand more in just a minute. There are many different tile leveling systems on the market and you definitely want to double check to make sure you get the correct grout joint when you do order your tile leveling system. And if you want to order this tile leveling system, I'll put a link in the description below. All right, so now I just repeated the process and installed the next tile and same thing, kind of wiggle it into place and then line up with the red mark that you see here. What I strongly recommend you do is clean off the tile as you go if you get any thin set on it. It's much easier to get off now than it is later, so always just keep a spare cloth to where you can just wipe it down as you go. Next thing I'm gonna do is take the wedges that came with the tile leveling system. And as you can see, there's a side that's kind of notched and then there's a side that's smooth. We're gonna to want to put the smooth side down. So we're gonna slide it right into those spacers that we installed earlier. And then we're gonna take the tool that it came with. Now this side's gonna straddle the thinner side of the wedge. So we're gonna straddle it and then we're gonna squeeze them tight. And if the tile shifts on you a little bit, be sure to shift it back into place. And as you can see, it leveled up these two tiles really nice. Now what I'm gonna do before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm gonna take more of the tile leveling system spacers, and I'm gonna place them under the tile that I already have set, because it's much easier to do this now, just in case the thin set starts setting up, then you gotta really force those spacers in there. And if you come back the next day and you don't have those spacers in, well, you're not going to get them in because that thin set, once it sets up, it's almost like rock in some cases. So what I'm going to do is place these about two inches away from the edges. And also we know there's going to be a break in this layout right here. So I'm going to just guesstimate about two inches away from each side of that center. So that way we have the wedges or the spacers properly in the place when we come to install the next row. I noticed that the cement board was pulling the moisture out of that thin set pretty quick. So what I'm gonna do is take a damp sponge and a clean bucket of water, and then just dampen that floor down. So that way it doesn't pull the moisture out of that thin set too much. When I first started, it didn't pull it out as much because the thin set was more fresh. But as I got going, I noticed it was starting to pull it out too quick. So I'm just gonna dampen it very lightly before I put the thin set down on the floor. When you install the tile, you're gonna to notice some tiles are gonna have thin set push up between the grout joints. You definitely wanna clean this out now because if it dries and hardens overnight, it's very difficult to remove the next day. So as you can see on this first row, we got it lined up with that chalk line really well. 
So there's nothing wrong with that. And now that that row is complete, we're gonna start the second row. In order to start the second row, I must first find the center of my 24 inch tile. The tile is actually a little less than 24 inches. So the center is actually 11 and 7 eighths. So check your tile to see exactly what yours is. And again, I'm doing a 50% offset. So more or less a stagger joint. So now that I found the very center, I know I got to line up with the grout joint of my row previously. So I'm just going to line up that joint very well right in the center. So it's going to look something like that. So as we can see, we're right in the center of that joint. And now what I'm going to do is mark the edge of the tile over here with my pencil. And now after you got the edge of that tile marked, we're going to lift it up off the floor and we're going to go with this line. So we're going to measure off the wall and it looks like we got 23 inches to that mark. So now I gotta go down the wall and mark 23 inches and chalk a line. I just wanna make you well aware that it depends on how you want your tile to lay out is where you place your chalk line. Now that I got the chalk line on the floor, I know that's gonna be my reference line for all the tiles to give it a staggered look. So now before I get started, I gotta fill in this crack. So I got three and three quarters. So I'm gonna subtract a quarter inch from that measurement to allow for an expansion gap and a grout joint. So it's gonna be three and a half. So we're gonna go over here to the wet saw and I'll show you how to cut it. In order to cut the three and a half inch piece, I got a scrap piece of tile here and I wanna keep this factory edge to butt to the other factory edge. So all I gotta do is measure over three and a half inches and make a mark. So I know that is the edge of the tile that I wanna cut. I'm gonna slide it and just butt right up to that tile saw right where I want it to cut, so right there. So now all I gotta do is turn it on and run it through the blade, but before I turn it on, I'm gonna put in my ear protection and wear my eye protection. Now as you can see, we got a perfect three and a half inch piece. When it comes to installing a cut piece, it's just like installing a full piece other than it's much smaller. And I'd like for you to note that you'll see the white thin set going on the floor right here in this time lapse. And that's because I just had a random bag of white thin set that came on delivery with the other thin set. But just so you know, it is exactly just like the darker thin set other than it's the color of white. And you definitely want to clean out between the joints with it as well. And I'd just like for you to know it's better to have a darker thin set when you have darker tile and a lighter thin set when you have a lighter tile. So either color would have worked here anyways, but I just wanted you to be well aware that there are different types of thin sets out there on the market. And when it comes down to tightening up the leveling system clips, there are different versions other than using a tool like this to clamp them down that you just simply screw down the top of the tile leveling system instead of having to have a tool with you at all times. If you're wondering how many days I had installing this kitchen floor I had about four days I had one day of installing the cement board and I'll put a card in the top right hand corner of the screen if you want to see how I did that then I had two days of installing the tile and then one day of grouting and that is with a helper helping me intermittently so it depends on your skill level is to how quick you can install your tile I'm back here the next day after installing this tile and now I need to remove the tile leveling system and all you need to remove it is a rubber mallet and you simply just smack the leveling system like so and it just snaps those tile spacers right off and then you can reuse these wedges and in fact I need to reuse these wedges to finish the rest of this tile so all we got to do is remove them all and also if you don't want to remove them that way and if you need to remove a tile a wedge all you got to do is pull this back and it's just going to work it right out for whatever reason you have to do that you can also do that so now i'm going to remove all of these wedges after you remove all of the leveling system everywhere there was a space here you're going to have a place where mortar came up under it and whenever you have that happen it's a simple fix and i'm going to show you how to remove it the tool that i use to remove the thin set off the floor is just a simple razor scraper the, so the first thing we got to do is get the bulk thin set off the floor wherever there is any and as you can see right here where the leveling system is there's the most and this is just an easy way to scrape it right off but as you can see this is flush with the tile so we need to get that down a little deeper so all we got to do is start scraping and inching our razor scraper into that joint like so and it removes it relatively easy now the longer the thin set sets up the harder it is so I recommend doing this the day or two after you install the tile. 
So as you can see, we're just going to dig it right out, right like so. And that is really all there is to it. And you do want to be careful not to hit your scraper right into the other tiles head on like that. You can chip the tile because this is metal. So be sure to be careful not to hit into the tile head on. And now I'm going to go across the whole floor and do the removal of the thin set. After you scrape all the thin set off the floor, you definitely want to vacuum in between this and the next step because you want to get the bulk dust using the vacuum. After you vacuum the floor thoroughly, next all we're going to do is just take a damp sponge and some clean water and just wipe the whole floor down. So that way we remove any excess dust or any residue from the thin set. I'm now going to mix up the grout. And in order to mix up the grout, we need the grout that you're going to choose as far as your color and if it's sanded or non-sanded. This one's sanded. Typically, for regular tile, you use sanded grout. But if you're doing some kind of mosaic or glass tile, you typically get unsanded grout, just so you know. So we got our grout, and we're going to have an empty five-gallon bucket. And then we're going to have a half-inch drill with a mixing blade, and we've got a clean bucket of water. And just like the thin set, I always like to wear a respirator when mixing up the grout. We're going to first begin by pouring in however much grout we think we'll need. And since this is 200 square foot, we're going to need at least half this bag of grout. Next, we're going to pour in just a little bit of water, not too much, because you put too much in, you can't take it back out. Now we just put our half-inch drill into the mix and start mixing it up. And keep adding water and mixing until we get a peanut butter-like consistency. After we got a good peanut butter-like consistency, we're just going to let it sit for five minutes. Okay, after it's been sitting up for five minutes, we just remix it for a few more minutes. All right, so I'm going to first begin in the far corner of the kitchen. And grouting tile is really a simple process with a few tips. It'll go pretty quick. So the first thing we're going to do is grab a scoop of it out of the bucket. And we're just going to try to localize the grout joint and try not to smear it all over the tile. Now, if we were doing small tiles, we would. But in this case, they're larger tiles, so our grout joints are farther apart. So I'm just going to smear it or squeeze it into the joint and just pack it right into that joint like so. And when you wipe the grout, we try not to wipe into the joint like that. We're gonna to try to go across the joint. So again, don't go into the joint when you wipe it. Just be sure to pack it on an angle and then keep cleaning it off and running through the grout joints. The best tip I can give you when it comes to grouting is do not wait too long in between when you apply the grout and wiping it off. When I first started grouting back in the day, I learned that very quickly because the grout actually sets up relatively quick. All right, so after this has been sitting for about 15 minutes, we're gonna take a clean sponge and water, which is fresh, not the old water that we were using. And what we need to do is make sure it's damp and not super wet, because if it's really wet, it'll make these joints look watered down. So when we wipe it, same idea. We're just gonna go on an angle, and we're trying to get the bulk off of it. We're not looking for a totally finished look right now. We're looking just to get the bulk thin set, or sorry, the bulk grout off the floor. And you always wanna make sure there's some kind of haze to where it's dried some before you do this. So again, it usually takes about 15 minutes. So something like this. All right, after I wipe down the whole kitchen with the sponge, I'm gonna go back through with a brand new clean bucket of water and we're gonna do the exact same thing, except this time we're looking to remove more of the haze. So as you wipe, just try to keep your sponge relatively clean and we're looking for almost a finished look here as far as how clean it is. So be sure to wring out your sponge a lot just every few swipes we're going to wring it out again and we're going to wipe it down and just keep removing the haze and now you're going to want to change your water out multiple times during the second wipe down so by the time you see it looking pretty cloudy get a new bucket of water that's the key you don't want to keep wiping down with dirty water because you're just going to keep the haze onto the towel so we're going to do that and you might have to do this step a few times until you get most of that haze off I've wiped this tile down a total of three times and as you can see there is still just a slight haze on it. So after I complete the whole house I'm going to wipe down all the tile in the house with some tile haze remover. So that's going to give it a nice final touch. And if you see these kitchen cabinets behind me, if you need to know how to install the kitchen cabinets, check out this video. It'll help you out. <laughs> 